Hi everyone, this is going to be a little bit different. I understand that and I hope that the sound is going to be okay. This is a voiceover. Thank you so much for joining me. It's a first for me. I'm here with my Nani Pua Kea Doga Shima and it is struggling. It has been struggling since it bloomed for me last year. I boil it down to Brassavola roots, Brassavola being a parent in this Brassocatlia Nani Pua Kea. Dogashima and yeah, Brassavola roots have a certain kind of quirk to them and each and every one is different depending on the parentage. I appreciate your time very much. This video is going to be a little bit different simply because of the voiceover, but clearly what I normally do, soak the pot, try to release the roots from the side of the pot. But all of this being said, the orchid itself is not in good shape. She has been babied and protected from the light that she requires to bloom. I don't want her to bloom. She has also been attacked by scale in the past months. So she gets treated every second, every third day. She gets painted. She has made considerable improvements since the last time we saw her, where she was very stressed out with anthocyanin. She has also plumped up. Some of her leaves are opening up and things are looking much, much better. Last year when I cleaned this orchid up, I did not want to separate her from the rhizome in my cleanup. I just wanted to make sure that the mistake I had made with regards to the Brussavola roots, that I could recover some roots and get the orchid back on track. And as you can see, I do have some roots, even right into the pot, new root nubbins growing. So the plan in this video is to separate this orchid and and give her pretty much a reset, a new start, and divide her. Clean her up, and also soak her with bleach to hopefully counteract any more scale that we have in the pot, and then see what we're left with at the end of the day. Getting her out of the pot I thought was gonna be a lot easier, but then I did find a little bit of resistance with one extra long root in the pot, which is great. I was very, very cautious to try and save that root. It was not as easy as I thought it was going to be, but in the end, I needed that root because everything else depends on what comes afterwards and there are no guarantees that it's going to be okay. This orchid is not in good shape. Every little root helps. Eventually, I did manage to get the root out of the pot without any problems at this stage. Having released the root, what I expected from last year, knowing how much deterioration and root rot I had experienced and counted, there was nothing left of the rest of the root system. So she just literally lifted herself out of the pot. No problems there. And I just put her down and did my regular cleanup. And then it's time to get rid of all that junk. Everything from last year that didn't make it through. The orchid pretty much is surviving on the little strands of roots that we saw earlier. Everything else is completely dead, which I unceremoniously just chopped off and cut away to make room to see what is going on at the bottom of the rhizome and then also get that cleaned up. When I was done with getting rid of the dead roots, this is what we had left. A three-directional growth of a Nanipuakea dogashima. Root nubbins on one direction of growth. Scale damage that you can see clearly inside, right by the rhizome now. And some strands of roots on the other direction, the other side of the rhizome that, well, yeah. With all the handling that I was doing, that long root had snapped and kind of broken. It was only hanging on by the strand of the root itself. Having had a look at the rhizome, checked out the directions of growth, I proceeded then to cut in and make my divisions. This is what I wanted to do last year. But, beautiful color, hey? Yeah. It is obvious that this orchid is infected with Fusarium. Early, early stages, but it's there. Very, very clear to see. I have no doubts as to what I'm looking at. 
And then it was just to see where else am I going to cut in, and then we could really, really assess the damage of the scale right at the base, where I couldn't get in with my paintbrush, but there they were. Happy days. Incredible, incredible. So, one more spray with the alcohol, but what I'm going to do is take a break and come back after my secateurs have dried before we make the second cut. Meanwhile, the secateurs were drying and I just, I had to do something because my mind had just imploded, exploded, and I started to brush the scale off at the base. It was a pointless exercise because I was actually going to put this orchid into bleach anyway. But I had to settle my nerves. I had, um, I was very close to just stopping everything and getting out the garbage bag. It was not a good orchid day for me today. But anyway, yeah, so I took the alcohol and I started to bond with my orchid again and paint away a little bit of the scale. While the secateurs have dried now, off and in, finding another spot to make another division, hopefully with some better news. Just cut into another point of her growth direction. And let's have a look-see. Ta-da! Incredible, huh? What a bummer. What a bummer. If you're still with me at this point in time, apart from the fact my voice is doing something different as opposed to what my hands are doing, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. The fact that I didn't bin this orchid was mainly down to the fact I was filming it. And here's the other side of the rhizome that we can see clearly. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And the scale. It's just not looking good. Right. As you do, the first two pieces went straight into the bleach solution while I was working with the third piece because I wanted to see, is this even worth saving? There are absolutely no roots, usually in my experience, when a Brassavola hybrid comes to this point. The rest is very, very quick deterioration and decline. And I wanted to make sure to see whether it was worth keeping. I mean, there's plenty, plenty of structures on this piece. There should be enough energy for it to push a new growth. There are no guarantees though, so just assessing the situation with this piece at this point in time. And the more I fiddled with it, the worse I felt, so I kept it and off into the bleach solution it went. All the pieces got a once over, took off any old sheaths, checked for any scale, got the toothbrush if I saw something dubious, and scrubbed down the structures as best as I could. So they were all treated in the same manner before the bleach soak. Well, this is going to be interesting. My camera overheated, blocked out the sound and everything, so technical issues. I don't know how the voiceover went. I hope that I could explain my process and what I was thinking at the time throughout the voiceover. But we're back now, hopefully with the right sound. And after having bleached everything, my tray, my entire kit and caboodle is all in the kitchen, having been bleached. This is now my orchid that is in bleach. It's been about 20 minutes, and I'm just going to turn her around so that the leaves also go into the water, not just the base. The bleach is for the scale, thanks to Ed's orchids. This is what is now common practice to remove scale, hopefully permanently, from an orchid that is infected or affected. And then we're going to give her another 20 minutes facing this way with the leaves in the water and then hopefully kill off anything that was at the rhizome that'll deteriorate her further. You see, all of that is still there. I might need to get the toothbrush out and do that. What I'm really trying to do is protect this root. It is long. I don't want it to kink off. I may have already damaged it beyond repair at the base. We'll see. We'll see. This is not looking good, peoples. I have a little bit of hope for one piece now that I've damaged this beautiful extended root here. This is not looking good, but hey, for the sake of the channel, we're going to proceed, continue soaking, and 
I will now prepare the fungicide. Well, we have done the bleach treatment. Now, in here, I have changed the water out. I have Faisan 20. This is four and a half liters of RO water and one tablespoon of Faisan 20. As per the instructions with regards to how to soak your orchid, in what concentration, against Fusarium with Faisan 20. Readily available, that's why I thought I would use this product today as opposed to something I can get locally. Soak for 20 minutes and we will be back to pot up and rescue mode. These divisions of Brassocatlia Nanibuakea Dogashima. 20 minutes later, all done. Now it's just a question of taking them out, sealing the cut with some cinnamon, and then I'll pot them up. One is going to be pretty easy because it's straight into rescue mode. Let's give everything a dab of cinnamon. Trying to stay away from any of the roots that are now super, super precious. And I keep bashing that root tip there and I don't like it. Let's put that aside. There is cinnamon already on the tray. So that's one. And the other one I'm going to have to dab with my finger. This one doesn't have any roots, so it's okay. It's easier. There we go. Right, <clears throat> let's get them inside. Despite the fact that I believe the root has busted the main route that I want it to keep. We're just gonna put everything in there and see how it fares, how it progresses. I want it a bit lower in the pot, help me with the humidity around the base. Not exactly happy with the position of the roots, but they have air around them, they have humidity around them, and my regular flushing will help that along as well. So that's one, I don't even believe I need to tie it up. So I'm gonna get rid of anything that'll make me bump against it. Let's have a look at the second one. First of all, get a tag into one of those. And let's see how we are going to do this little guy. Pretty much the same thing, but I'm going to tie this one up because I want it a little bit more suspended from the base, I want those roots there to have to find their way down towards the leka. So we're going to do our suspend and raise the orchid trick that has worked so well in the past. And it's worked so well with a not Fusarium infected orchid. And let's hope that it'll work as well for a Fusarium infected orchid. These roots look rather promising for sure. And for any follow-ups, I want to make mention that unfortunately I bashed the root tips on these roots, which is a shame with all the rinsing and lifting and around. These root tips, if they fail, it's not because of what we're doing here, it's because of the damage that was incurred during the bleach treatment and during the Faisan soap. So unfortunately, I don't think these roots will progress. We'll give it a go anyway. We don't have much of a choice. Well, all I can say is at least Nani Puakea Dogashima is clean. If she gets scale again, well, I'm going to probably decide that I will bin this orchid completely. It is another one of the batches from the order with the Francis Fox in it. And once they get to this stage, I have bashed the roots. I have broken a root with all the handling today. I don't really see much, much hope with Brassavola crosses once they come to this stage and if they have Fusarium. My little stars deteriorated very, very quickly. All I can say is that all we can do is try. Maybe there are enough structures that'll help her survive. Personally, I doubt it. Very strange video for me, I have to say, including technical difficulties at the beginning. Probably a good thing because when I cut into that rhizome, I was not well pleased. So the video gods were in my favor. I did not have to cut out anything that was inappropriate. Your time, very much appreciated. I hope this was useful. 
sorry that it is no good news video. These things can happen. I prefer they didn't with the circumstances surrounding a specific order. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for keeping me company. It kept me focused. I was very, very close to just binning this orchid. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.